founded in 1967 and extinct just nine years later. It would be hard to argue that the American Basketball Association was a roaring success. But despite the short-lived existence of the ABA, the roots of the NBA as we recognize it today emanate as much from that nine-year period as from anything within the NBA itself. This is the story of that enduring influence. The ABA was established when 11 prospective owners each pitched in a $5,000 fee to claim a franchise within the upstart organization. What's interesting about the league's inception is that it was never intended to last. The owners founded the ABA with the express purpose of, at some stage, forcing a lucrative merger with the NBA. Prospective investors were enticed to purchase an ABA franchise for a fraction of what it would have cost to buy an NBA expansion team. It was predicted that, come the inevitable merger, their investment would instantly double in value. But in order to make a merger viable, the ABA first had to be taken seriously, both by basketball fans and by the NBA. It had to establish itself as a worthy competitor to the NBA and an attractive potential alternative for viewers. First and foremost, that would require on-court talent. In its efforts to acquire the best young players, the ABA broke boundaries. At the time, the NBA and the NCAA, the governing body of collegiate sports, had an agreement whereby no college player could join the NBA before completing their full four-year college eligibility. When Spencer Hayward, an Olympic champion and one of the best young players in the country, decided to turn pro in 1969 after his sophomore season at Detroit Mercy College, he was barred from declaring for the NBA draft. Of course, the ABA stepped in, creating a hardship rule whereby Hayward was deemed eligible for their draft as a means of escaping the poverty in which he'd grown up. Hayward joined the Denver Rockets and was named the ABA's most valuable player after his rookie season. He'd later go on to play for the Seattle Supersonics, the New York Knicks and the LA Lakers in the NBA, becoming a four-time All-Star. In 1974, the ABA offered future NBA MVP Moses Malone the chance to skip college altogether thanks to its hardship rule. The upstart league's chase for talent also saw it sign Doug Moe and Connie Hawkins, two players blackballed by the NBA for their alleged involvement in a college betting scandal, despite neither ever being convicted. Both would become champions and all-stars in the ABA. You see, the league's freewheeling recruitment drive wasn't limited to players either. Some of the NBA's top referees were offered significant pay rises to switch allegiances and help raise the standards of play and professionalism in the ABA. In a further grasp for credibility, NBA legend and former champion George Mikan was installed as the ABA's first commissioner. But in order for the ABA to thrive and grow into a legitimate big-time sports league, it would not be enough to simply stockpile talent. Without a major broadcast deal and with comparatively low attendance figures, the ABA had to find ways to differentiate itself from the NBA and stand out as a spectacle. And so it positioned itself as a more glamorous alternative, showcasing the skills and athleticism of its stars. At Mikan's insistence, ABA courts included a three-point line, a full 12 years before the NBA embraced the three-pointer. It was also Mikan's idea for the ABA to use its now iconic red, white and blue striped ball, the theory being that it'd be more visually appealing and easier to see in dimly lit arenas. At the time, the NBA's yearly All-Star Game was a forgettable event held on a Tuesday. The ABA made an extravaganza of its All-Star Showcase, staging the game on a Sunday evening and peppering the weekend with exhibitions and meet and greets. And out of desperation, yet more innovation. At halftime of the ABA's last ever All-Star Game, it staged the inaugural Slam Dunk Contest, famously won by Dr. J, Julius Irving, with an impressive foul line leap. With stars like Dr. J turning the slam dunk into an art form, the novelty of three-point shooting and a league-wide emphasis on fast-paced, offence-heavy play, an avant-garde and entertaining brand of basketball emerged. Veteran agent Ron Grinker succinctly summed up the ABA's uniqueness when interviewed for the book Loose Balls, an oral history of the now-defunct league. The NBA was a symphony, he said. The ABA was jazz. But even though the league was only ever intended to exist for the purpose of an eventual merger, it struggled to survive through much of its nine-year lifespan. The ABA never had a television rights deal with a national broadcaster. 
instead relying on local TV and gate receipts for income. And with the majority of its clubs based in small market cities and playing in arenas with modest capacities, the ABA was financially hamstrung. The league started with 11 clubs, but that number had dwindled to just six by the end of its final season. The league did eventually achieve its goal, though. Negotiations over a prospective merger had begun some six years earlier in 1970, but in 1976, the NBA finally absorbed the ABA and cherry-picked its stars. As part of the deal, four ABA clubs were integrated into the NBA as expansion teams. The New York Nets, now of course in Brooklyn, the Denver Nuggets, the Indiana Pacers and the San Antonio Spurs. A one-off draft was also held, allowing NBA clubs to sign the remaining ABA free agents. The teams and players that moved over to the NBA, including future Hall of Famers such as Irving, Malone and George Gervin, ensured the ABA's immediate legacy. In the first NBA All-Star game after the merger, 10 of the 24 players selected had come from the ABA. And even now, almost five decades on, ripples of that influence can be found throughout the modern league. From pioneering the player power era by circumventing the old restrictive rules around college underclassmen entering the professional game, to how the analytics revolution that swept the NBA can trace its roots in the ABA's then groundbreaking recording and publishing of detailed statistics and from how the NBA followed the ABA's lead in embracing the glitz and ceremony of the All-Star Weekend and the Slam Dunk Contest, to how the ABA's use of three-point shooting and dynamic offensive play helped shape the pace and space style prevalent in today's league. The ABA might have lost the battle, said former ABA player and coach Doug Moe, but we won the war. The NBA now plays our kind of basketball. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, you'll probably also like The Athletic. It has the best team of basketball writers in the world in a personalised experience connecting you with the teams that you care about the most, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As. And you can try it now for free for 30 days.